Today, I wanna to talk to you about a new trend where hackers are bypassing multi-factor authentication to get access to accounts. Specifically, I'm gonna show you how this can happen with Office 365 and a few things you can do to help protect yourself. Now, why are we talking about this? Well, regulators have noticed an increase in this type of attack they call a man in the middle or to be gender neutral, an adversary in the middle because you know, women can hack too. Just as the name implies, a adversary in the middle attack is where a third party places themselves in between you and the service you typically use. Let's walk through a typical example from the victim's perspective. These attacks typically start with a phishing attempt. A user clicks on a link thinking that they're going to the document or website referenced in the email. Two things to notice with this attack. One, the domain is different. This is the attacker's domain. Two, the login is actually the real Office 365 login experience. Most people understand how the username and password could be stolen, but what about MFA? Doesn't it prevent this? Especially if someone is using number matching. The short answer is no. Adversary in the middle attacks not only steal the login credentials, they also steal the session token. What is a session token? Once you enter your username and password, a session token is stored in your browser. Every time you go back to the website, your browser automatically presents the session token for you so you don't have to log in with your username and password for every single page you visit at that site. Another way to think of a session token may be the same way you think of a hotel key. When you first arrive at the hotel, uh, you don't have access to anything within the hotel. You must present typically an ID and credit card. Once you present that information, the hotel will give you a hotel key. Now you don't need to present your ID and credit card anymore. You simply use your hotel key to access your room, the spa, the gym, and other areas of the hotel. The hotel key acts just like a session token. Now let's take a look from the hacker's perspective. With their tool, they were able to grab the session cookie. All they need to do is simply copy and paste and use a tool like Cookie Editor in their browser. They simply open Cookie Editor, import the code they just got from their tool, click import, and now all they need to do is reload the page. And when they do this, notice there isn't a username and password or an MFA. They simply get in because they have the session cookie. Now this sounds bad, but there are a few ways you can actually protect yourself. Let's talk about two of them. The first method we're gonna talk about is a YubiKey. This is a physical device that you actually plug in to your computer or you use an NFC reader to read from your phone. When a YubiKey is registered with a specific service, it is bound to that service's URL. If a third party tries to get you to log into another site with their URL, the YubiKey simply won't allow it. It will only work with the URL with which it is registered. This significantly limits the hacker's ability to intercept access codes and replay them. This is why security keys are typically called phishing resistant multi-factor authentication because of that feature where the service URL is bound to the key. The other option is a device authentication. So somewhat similar to the YubiKey, a device authentication requires not only your username, password, and MFA, it also requires the device that you're coming from to be registered with that service. So if a third party intercepts your session token, but it's not on an official device, like a corporate device, the session token will no longer be valid and can't be used. A good example of this is Office 365 and conditional access. There's a couple different ways you can set it up, but generally speaking, device authentication is a way you can also protect yourself from this man in the middle or adversary in the middle attack. So if you want to learn more, I've included some additional links in the description section. And for my cyber nerd friends out there, if I'm sure you have some extra ways people can protect themselves, drop a comment in the below so you can educate everybody.